Hi folks, let's cam up this part. The customer sent this in and they said, I did a 3D adaptive, I really don't know what to do next. I'm new to Fusion 360, let's tackle it. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I give the customer a lot of credit. They got this far and that's great. Let's take a step back. If I click on their setup, I can see they've got their stock defined. So I, I want to I want to change this as minimally as possible, but I would tell you that's a lot of stock to hold on to uh, if it's sticking up in a vise like this. You can see the Z is pointing up. So I would recommend take that piece of stock over to your bandsaw or something, and let's right click on this setup, edit stock, and let's kind of cut that in half. So we'll say maybe make it one inch high. I'm then going to machine. We're going to assume that we're holding it down here with some jaws that are going to kind of go across this section right here. So let's just offset it from the top by 0.05 inches. That We'll use that to clean up the top a little. Now for orientation, this would imply that we're holding it left to right in the machine. So it would kind of be, it would be oriented just, you know, like this. That's totally fine. So if you're new to Fusion 360, this is an adaptive strategy. It's great because it looks at how much stock is here. So it's going to maintain a constant step over. I'm going to edit that and look at some of their settings though. So passes, you always, always, always want to have stock to leave because adaptives are not finishing strategies. So let's just leave 10 thousands. It's a pretty small part. If I were doing on our Tormach, I would just leave 10 thousands. And that he's got a really small tool so I'm gonna recommend we switch that let's use the biggest tool we can to sort of rough this all out a uh, pretty open area here so let's use a quarter inch tool first I'm not gonna worry about speeds and feeds in this video um, and we'll do an optimal of 20% of the tool diameter so it's a quarter inch tool times 0.25 so see that quarter inch tool times 0.25 will give me a, the step over I want and maximum step down, I can cut at least, I could probably cut more than this, but we'll just say one tool diameter. So 0.25 inch deep, click okay. And baby steps, Let's take a look at the simulation. I like to turn my stock on, go to tail tool path, click okay. And we can scrub along the bottom here to kind of zoom forward, fast forward to see what we got. Awesome. So it couldn't get inside of this little pocket with that tool, that's okay. Um, and the other thing is, let's take a look. So that's fine. I'm gonna assume that we're using a vise to hold it with the vise shells coming up to, you know, say about here, which that's gonna let us cut the full profile of the part, which is really important to how we're doing this. Now, did it cut? Uh, okay, so see how it's not cutting this little shoulder in here? Take a look under the passes tab. There's a setting that I always recommend you have checked called flat area detection. If you read that little pop-up menu, it basically says, when I'm doing an adaptive strategy, I'm gonna step down per the maximum roughing step down, subject to the fine as well. We're not going to get into that. But what I want to do is say, hey, by the way, if you see a flat area like this shelf here or this ring here, go ahead and machine that as well, subject to how much stock I want to leave. So I'm going to say check that. Now, I just told you guys I want that checked all the time. It's a really cool thing in Fusion where you can right-click on things and say make all default. Make all default makes it the default for everything you, you do in your Fusion account. Make default just does it for that file. I don't use that very often. Make all default is the one to go to. But fortunately, there isn't a checkbox or a way to right click and do that on flat area detection. Take a look though. If I right click and go to compare and edit, it brings up every single parameter that's in the edit, but it's in like a more editable form. So I'm just going to search down here. I'm going to type flat. Flat area detection, yes. Now I'm gonna right click, and here I'm gonna say make all default. Awesome. So now it should, see it put in a toolpath here. 
that's subject to the radial or axial stock to leave, and it's also cleaning up this face. Now what we need to do, um, but actually before this, if you take a look, I want to face this thing off. And we can do that with a quarter, same quarter inch tool. So I'll do 2D face. Just click OK. It's going to face off at the top. I'm going to drag this, though, above the adaptive. So click and hold. Move up to here. Face, adaptive. Now there's another one called horizontal, which is really good. My concern is I don't want to clean stuff up yet. I want to until I get rid of uh, this little groove in here. Can we fit that in there? It looks like it'll be close. Um, don't have a. Oh, let's see here. If I hit I on the keyboard, can I measure between there? Yeah, I can. Point two one four does not fit. Okay. So let's watch this. Right click, duplicate. If I've got a second instance of that, right click, edit, change to that smaller tool, and click OK. Now this is going to be no good because you're going to say, well, wait a minute here, you're recutting a whole bunch of air. You can see that it made its way through that little pocket there, which is great. Now let's edit it again. Second tab, choose rest machining. That means remaining stock. What didn't I mach what have I already machined? Don't recut that. Amazing. Just amazing. Click OK. It's going to analyze the operation before. Oops, I goofed. Take a look. It's a silly setting, frankly. The source of the rest machining shouldn't be your setup stock. It should be the previous operations. That says when I look at how much rest uh, there is left to machine. Look at the prior operations. Click OK. Now you're going to see it's only going to do work down in this area. Takes a little longer to compute. Awesome. Awesome. Now I would actually go back to that quarter inch end mill. Uh, let's see here. To do. Well, no, you know what? We can't because it doesn't fit in there. So we'll do it with the. Um, what's this guy? It's like a 532nd, a right? 3D. Horizontal. You'll notice horizontal ends up being a strategy that looks two dimensional, but click here for a video we did where we kind of walk through what are the differences. It's not what you think between 2D and 3D strategies. So 3D horizontal, click OK. It's all, you don't have to do anything, it's amazing. And it's going to machine the flat area here, the flat area here, the flat area right here. And it's going to do the top as well. Um, I don't really want it to do the top because I already machined the top and we faced it. So there's a little trick here. Edit heights. Our top height, instead of it being stock top, I'll have it be the model top. But instead of it being the model top, I'm going to have it be the model top with a negative 0 0.001 offset. Basically, start looking at stuff to machine a thousandth of an inch below the top of the model. That is awesome. Click save. Click on the setup when we simulate now, not the operations, but rather this setup. Simulate, play. Okay, faces it off. Adaptive. I kind of already know what's going to happen, so I'm going to click at the end of this green to let it kind of ramp jump forward. Got to clean up some stuff. We may still need one, one more contour left to do. Cleans that up. Awesome. Awesome. Now, we've done a little bit of a weird thing here. We've mixed in some uh, things like horizontal. Well, it's really just horizontal. That is, It is a cleanup operation. But remember, when we did the adaptive up here, we had stock to leave. So this shape here is not yet to size. In other words, we took it off the part right now. This wouldn't be 0.165 inches thick. It would be the 0.165 plus the 0.01 on each side that we left. So what we do for, for cleanups is 2D contour. And I'll keep that same end mill. I probably would switch back to the biggest end mill I could, like that quarter inch, just for more tool strength. Um, so I can't I can't do this slot, though. It's a great, actually, it's a great example. Let me do this first. Click OK. We get a toolpath. That's fine. 
Now, again, that, there was that link to that video that explains it, but 2D toolpaths are dumb. So if I also click here to machine that, watch what happens. This would actually crash uh, the tool into the part because we know, excuse me, we're not using that quarter inch tool. Let me show you if we were using that quarter inch tool, how it would do that. Tool nine. You know, the toolpath looks okay, but the blue line is actually what's called the control point. It's the center of the tool. So when we come in here and we machine this, uh, let's see, let's just machine this, no stock. Take a look. I'm going to go all the way right there. That's what I wanted to see. Boop. Switch it to all toolpath. Right. Boom. Look at that. It crashed, and you wouldn't know that. Here's what's really scary to me, too. I don't mean this to in, a, in a bad way, but just a, a good mindset to be aware of. If I simulate it with stock and I jump to the end, if I take a look at that, I kind of think, hey, that looks okay. And you might look at that gray area here and think, well, you know, whatever. There's a lot of different colors here. A really, really good lesson, especially if you're new to Fusion, toggle this light bulb right here. What is that light bulb? That light bulb is your whole CAD side. When I simulate it, I want to look at the stock that it removed, and then I want to also stop or turn off the CAD model because look, the CAD model here is backfilling. It's backstopping your model. And this would be much more alarming, in my opinion, when you're looking at that with that big gouge, than this right here, which looks kind of looks like you're okay. So. We'll switch back to that smaller end mill. And the horizontal got this section here, so I think we're good. Um, so what would I do? I would, we'll fast forward through it all and just make sure, yep, almost done. But we need to machine away the mushroom top or the hat top, they call it sometimes. Let's take care of that. Right click on your setup and choose duplicate. So we've got another setup, I'll rename it to setup three. So take a look, when we were holding the part like this, we had all this stock down here, just a little bit at the top, um, but this is left, that, and that's what we need to get rid of. If we look at that setup, we can see it was a one inch piece of stock, and we were telling it, telling Fusion that it was 50 thousandths from the top. So the distance right up in here was 50 thousandths of an inch. This is a small part. So in this setup, I need to flip my orientation and I want to adjust the stock to match. So right click on setup three, edit. For now, I'll just click the blue arrow. See how I can click this? It's going to flip the orientation. Watch. Boom. But what it did was it moved the 50 thousandths to this the back side effectively with the new top and that's not what I want so I'm going to change this offset from Z top to offset from Z bottom and look the 50 thousands is now down there now we've already machined it away but I don't really care what I care about is the fact that this has stayed the same so I know that's about how much stock is left and that's perfect because again this is probably a bandsaw edge cut we want to get rid of it we need to machine it off uh, now, the actual point that I'm going to use, this is an interesting question. I would probably not, if we select a point, I would probably not choose a point like that because, like I just mentioned, we probably cut this with either a bandsaw or a saw that doesn't cut perfectly square. So it's not a reliable distance between uh, these two points. A better option might be a point down here and you may say well you but you're holding this in a vise I can't get to that point well you could use the top of a um, your hard jaw measure that and rest this on it as a stop and that would give you that point we'll cover that more click subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and we can go into stuff just like that but for the purpose of showing the cam I'll leave it here for now now I don't need any of this stuff we're just going to use the face so I hit delete on those ops and watch this, hit control G, it'll just regen. And it's actually, it's okay. It's not the f recipe that I want, but that would work. Uh, so let's edit the speeds and feeds and cut settings here. I'm going to say passes, it's a quarter inch tool. So I don't want that to step over, it's defaulting. If you right click 
and choose edit expression. That's a formula. It's really cool. These are parametrically driven camps. So it's basically saying uh, in this whole thing, there's a couple of, of iterations or if statements, but basically it's 95% of the tool diameter. I only want 25% uh, of the tool diameter or 20% rather, which is 0 0.05, but we can do it in one depth of pass. Uh, so I think this might be good. Click OK. Yeah, it looks OK. So check this out. We can watch the whole simulation. So don't click on setup three, don't click on setup two, click on setups, plural, the top guy, hit simulate, hit play, and it's gonna walk it's gonna walk us through the first setup where we have the part kind of upright. I'm gonna fast forward by clicking down here on the bottom of your screen up to, all the way to there. And then when it's done, it flips over and walks us along and you can see how it's machining the rest of that part away. This is literally how you would use your CNC mill to make this part, which is awesome. And you're done. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Take care. See you next Friday.